welcome to the 2011 PDGA Championship. This is a first year major and we're at the IDGC, Liz. You're right, Billy. This is in beautiful Appling, Georgia. The weather looks like it's breaking for us. And I know there's a lot of tough technical golf out there this weekend. Well, there's a lot of great players here. We were lucky enough to run some down for you. Here's some player talk. Well, all right, we've been able to track down Valerie Jenkins here at the IDGC for the PDGA Championships. We're sitting here in your, what, new traveling rig? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Nate, after his world championship, he had, you know, a little bit extra dough and yeah, we needed an upgrade from the, the Tioga, from the RV, and it gets way better gas mileage. Well, yeah, it's a little I see, bit cleaner. You know, I see a bed in the back that looks like there's storage underneath. How perfect. Yeah, exactly. We're loving it. <laughs> All right. So now you are also coming off of a big win at Women's Nationals just this last weekend. Two majors in a row. I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> um, well, you know, it. it's all right. You know, I feel like that they had a, this is like a placement major and um, you know, it's, it's still a major and you know, I'm excited to play it and of course I'm wanting to win, so yeah. Awesome, well we are, I know we're excited to get this interview and glad that you're here. Um, we wish you the best of luck this weekend. I know you've got all the confidence in the world playing these courses. You're great in the woods, great putter, so we wish you the best, Val. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Well, all right, I'm standing here with the national defending champion, Will Schustrick. How you doing today, Will? Good. Awesome. So what do you think of these courses here? I love these courses. They're a lot of fun to play. A lot of par fours and fives. Yeah, and this is the PDGA Championships. This is another major. It's going to kind of try to maybe uh, take on some of the same fame as the USDGC did last year. I mean, you're the defending champion. Everybody's coming for your title of that national superstar. What do you think about that? Yeah, just ready to play, I guess. Yeah, it's every other tournament, it's the same thing. All right, well, what do you think some of your strengths will be out here on these courses? Um, there's a lot of long driver shots that you gotta throw. So I think that definitely plays to one of my advantages. I think I can get a little farther up on the fairway, maybe an easier three on some of the holes. Hopefully it doesn't get me in trouble. Yeah, I know some of those long 700, 800 foot holes. <laughs> Everybody's looking for the three there. Yeah, definitely. Well, cool, I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you, Will. Yeah. Good luck this week. Thanks. Well, all right. I don't know if this man needs an introduction, but we're standing here with Ken Climo. Good to see you, Ken. Hi, Liz. How's it going? Glad to see you out here again, too. Thanks. Good to see you. Congratulations on your recent uh, development in the family life. Thank you. you know, everybody's excited to hear about that. Yeah. And we're really excited to see you out here on the course again. Can you tell us what's been going on with your arm? I know there's been some issues. I had a little tendonitis at first, and it wasn't too bad. Now we got it from canoeing. Then I played. Canoeing? Some, yeah. I paddled for like two days in a row for eight hours a day and just oh, no. overdid it and inflamed it a little bit. And then I played disc golf and I played ball golf and I played some disc golf and I played the Kansas City Wide Open. And at the end of the Kansas City Wide Open, it was just kind of frazzled. Screaming, yeah. yeah. It was screaming pretty bad and didn't play again until I tried to Beaver State Fling. I went up there and played around and probably injured it more playing then and wasn't able to play that. Went to the world, only threw about 10 shots and knew it wasn't ready, but it was close then. So I just decided not to play. Probably the best for move there, huh? So. And a couple weeks ago, it started to feel better, and I played my first round last week, about a week ago, and I didn't play again until today, and I played again. And, and how, free, how did it feel? Strong? Free, strong. I threw a good round. I shot a 52 on the Warner. <laughs> awesome. So I think it's back, and I'm ready to go. Awesome. Well, what, what would you say was your favorite course out here? Uh, I think I like the Jackson, just because it's a longer course. I like more like golf. I like par 72 stuff, and yeah, that's that's my kind of golf. But I, I like I like all the courses pretty much here. They're they're pretty good. You got to hit some lines, and you got to be accurate, and you got to make your putts, and you got to watch your footing. Oh yeah, for sure. There's yeah. a lot of places to get caught up out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I know everybody's coming uh, this year to play in this year's uh, new PDGA Championships. Um, do you have any comment on this entire new major that they have? I think it's kind of exciting to be a part of a fresh tournament that no one's ever been a champion of before, so you can kind of get your name on the inaugural trophy if you win. Sure, yeah, and did you see it inside thing. there? It's pretty good looking. I didn't see it yet. No, you should check it out. <laughs> yeah, this is a great place. It's a, it's a neat place. It's got three courses here, and there's a lot of diverse holes, and I think it's going to take you know a good, solid player to win this week. I think it's anybody's game out here. you got to be able to hit lines and make putts. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate your time so much, sir, and I wish you the best of luck this Thank week. You. Well, you can see those guys are in a great frame of mind, looking forward to a big weekend. Now let's get over where the lovely Liz Carr will show us the Ed Hedrick layout. Well, all right, we've arrived at the Steady Ed Hedrick Memorial Disc Golf Course, designed by Hall of Famers Chuck Kennedy and Tom Monroe. Today, this course is going to play 7,415 feet at a par 64. It's really tight, technical, and challenging. Let's go check it out. 
Hole number three is in the A position. It's going to play 302 feet. It's straight off the tee pad, but you are going to be forced to take the right-hand side. The gap on the right-hand side is considerably larger than the gap on the left-hand side. Again, you want to approach that green coming from right to left as to not skip off the backside. All right, we've reached the green on hole 3A. For the most part, this green is pretty level, but over to the left edge there, there are some rocks where if, if you run your putt, you can go right down and catch a roll down for a difficult comeback putt. All right, we've arrived at hole eight. It's in the A position, atop of those rocks. There is a challenging obstacle on this hole. It's a snaking crevice that goes through the entire length of this hole. And you want to be careful not to get down there because it's about a four foot drop and will be very challenging on your second shot. However, this is a good birdie opportunity. It's only about 240 feet long and relatively straight. Take your chances, but be confident. Number 14 is in the A position. It is right on the edge of Clark Lake here at the International Disc Golf Center. It's only 215 feet and players are going to have two options. They can take the tight line having to satisfy about an 8 to 10 foot gap or they can try that wide open lane on the left hand side. But be careful, there is water that you will have to fly over. Arriving at hole number 16 after coming off the par 5 on the backside. Players will have a chance here to get a two, and they have two different options to take. They can take the more open left-hand side or the little bit tighter, but maybe an easier shot on the right-hand side. Again, it's only 251 feet away. Go ahead and try to get your birdie here. The finishing hole at Steady Ed Hedrick Memorial Course is 453 feet long. It's a demanding shot. It's straight up, but you're going to have to get out through the woods. The basket is in the open, and it's going to take a good rip to get it through the gap. Well, all right, if you can stay in the middle of the fairway, you should be able to shoot around par at this course. This is hole number 18, and you've seen the Steady Ed Hedrick Memorial Course. Well, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed your course look at the Steady Ed. Now, let's go check out some live action from our advanced division over on the Jim Warner course. Well, we are at the International Disc Golf Center, Liz, and what a beautiful day it is. That's right, Billy, the rain is rolling away. It looks like we're making way for blue skies and lots of sunshine. Well, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to start with the advanced men, and we've got a group. We're out here on hole number 16, a beautiful but tough hole, Liz. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's all of 402 feet in there. The only way to really get down through there is to take this big hyzer line, and there's a lot of trouble on the right side. Well, this is a PDGA major. It's the PDGA Championships, and it is showing. This is an advanced group. We've got a guy from Holton, Texas, two guys from Charlotte, North Carolina, one guy from Kansas City, Kansas in this group. 
You're right, you know, I, I hope some of these Charlotte guys, you know, and I think I just heard tee off, so they should be starting soon here. Well, first is going to be Brandon Melton on the tee. That's right, he's out of Haltom City, Texas. Let's see if he's going to be able to challenge that. Oh, yeah. He's a 956 rated player. He has played a couple of pro events, so he's no stranger to pressure. This is just one intimidating starting hole, though. It's oh, a pretty good shot. Low. Yeah, he's definitely throwing a placement shot here. Well, if you've never oh, been boy. to the IDGC, I mean, you can tell him, Liz, it's all about staying in the fairway here. Yeah, you bet. You know, the, the other thing is he stayed in the fairway the whole way, but he's still right behind one of these trees. Well, there are plenty of trees to avoid on your tee shot and your up shot. Now to Charlotte, North Carolina, here's young Will Taylor. He's going. He's playing it tight, Billy. He might find trouble. Oh, he did. He's down along the base there. Everything, the land here really has tons of elevation. Lots of little gullies and creeks running through. It is some great disc golf land. Also out of Charlotte, North Carolina, this is Bradley Tucker. It's got to be good to be playing with one of your homies in a group like this, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is such a beautiful day. I, I, hopefully these guys are out here to have some fun, throw some good shots. Oh, that's early. That's, that's trouble. Oh, well, you know, it, it kept going, though. It, you know, it I think he might going. be able to get up and down from over there. He penetrated. It was such a bad shot, he missed everything. It's a good thing. Right, exactly. Well, here's Brett Burgess, and he's made the trip all the way from Kansas. Oh, he's a, no, I thought he was a wrong hander, Liz. He's just going to slick that sidearm out there. Oh, yeah, now, I wonder if he's going to take that same inside line that we just saw Bradley maybe accidentally take. Well, these guys are, they're advanced players, but these are your upper-level advanced players in the country. That's a good-looking shot, Liz. Just needs to miss that. You know, that's going to be just fine. He's still a little, he did hit a tree, but he was throwing a placement shot, so he didn't cut off his distance by much. Well, we're off. It's Friday afternoon, beautiful Augusta, Georgia. This is the PDGA Championships. All right, let's roll. Okay, we've got Brett Burgess. They have determined that he is out. Oh, boy, he's setting up a real tricky hey, shot is here. This, is this roller? Oh, my goodness, this is high risk, Liz. Oh, no, it's a, That's oh, a thumber. Is a shot, Billy. Get up and in. Oh, as he tried. What a great shot by Brett Burgess there, and creative. All right, now I believe it's going to be. Well, it looks like Will Taylor now down at the edge of the woods. He... Oh, that looks nasty down there. Billy. Oh, man, this is the problem with these courses. If you do not hit your line, this is what you're left with a lot of times. Well, you know, it leaves, it leaves you the choice. Am I going to be aggressive again and try to get up and down, or am I going to throw something safe back out to the fairway? Well, this is a legitimate par four. All he really needs to do, like you say, is get back up. About an 80-foot shot will get him right where he needs to be. Absolutely. I mean, he can do all of that, but it looks like he's going to be... That was a great shot there. Not overpowered and right where he wants. He's in the opening of the keyhole of the green. Now he's going to have a putt. Well, now moving back up top here, Brandon Melton, it looks like. That's he, right. He's going to have a stretch out forehand shot. This is a tricky shot. When he threw that drive about where he thought he wanted to from the tee. Yep, and it's because of that tree that you see right in front of him that he has to throw that. That shot. just needs to hook up. Oh, that might have been a good tree there, Liz. No, that was really going. He's 32, 35 feet out, and he should be able to make that putt if he's on. All right, we are looking at Bradley Tucker now. Now, his shot, I think he sawed it off a little bit early. He played the really, really tight line, but he missed enough stuff to really be... He's, what, well, three quarters of the way down the fairway? Yeah, I mean, we can't see his angle, but he is absolutely a lot closer, and I think he's actually got a line. He's setting up for a hyzer. Looks like looks like he might even have a driver in his hand. Maybe he's really trying uh, to hyzer right it. Right out of his hand there, and you were right. He had a skinny hyzer line. If he could have got to it, maybe could have got him up for a birdie putt. That's all right. I mean, he's still not out of the water. Par is not out of question here. It is a par four, and he's still close enough to possibly finish it out, get up and down from here. Well, this is the advanced division. This is a major, and pars are always good when you've got this many great players on one course lift. Uh, he looks like he's a uh, frustrated, hard, you know, third shot of the round here, and it's already becoming a mental balance uh, a oh, struggle, yeah. and it's going to be that way all day long. Yeah, I mean, it went from a, uh, a slicing hyzer to now a stretch out forehand, so this course demands a lot of time. Good looking shot. shot, Liz. Great shot by Bradley Tucker. That'll get him his par. Let's what move a down sigh of the, relief. We're going to get out of the green now and see if we can get a couple of birdie temps. Well, I mean, you know, he, he has an early, ugly shot. Great shot to get to here. The, what a attitude change it'd be if he could get a birdie. Oh, yeah, are you kidding? I mean, a, a bad shot to a birdie. I mean, it's possible in these woods. There's so many lines, Billy, but it all comes down to putting. Well, these are the moments that make him break your round because his attitude 
with Sauber walking off the tee. That's not how you want to start, but if he could birdie this first hole, he could run him on into a really good round here. Oh, I got it. And that is how you start. Just stay patient, even though his first drive was the worst of the group. A great putt, and he had to earn that birdie. Absolutely. All right, as the guys make their way into the green here, it looks like Brandon Melton is out. They're all pretty close. They're all kind of in that key old garden there, but uh, well, he's looks on like guinea he's gonna... pots. I mean, this is somewhere between 25 and 30 feet. He knows the camera's on him as an advanced player. Probably hasn't had that opportunity a lot. The nerves are up early. Oh, and it is just a couple inches low. Hit the front of the cage, Billy. Yeah, he's disgusted with it. He knows he makes that putt three, four hundred times a week. But it's the first hole. He's got an easy par. And you can watch these guys as their attitude fluctuate up and down throughout this round. It is just one tough battle out here, Liz. And this is going to be a game if you want a major championship this week. You're absolutely correct. All right, Bradley Tucker here suffering a little bit on the approach, but cans it up with a nice four for par. Well, that is exactly what he needed. You do not want to start the round with a bogey. He got away with that first shot, but did not take advantage. All right, nice job by Brett Burgess as well. well Let's move on to hole 17. Hole 16 here, we'll move on over. This is the advanced group Friday afternoon at the first annual PDGA Championships here in Augusta, Georgia. All right, looks like you can turn a thumber shot right into a birdie as well. Well, we made our way to 17, 277 feet, and yeah. this is danger. Yeah, you bet, Billy. And, you know, every like every other short hole out here, there's just so much danger involved to the green. This green is severely sloping away from the basket and down into a gully full of trees. Well, Will Taylor on the tee. Oh, it looks soft. It's going to come out and Heiser out. Just needs to stay clean. He's going to have a putt. That's a scary putt right there, boy. That He's got a putt, but it's a scary one. That's outside the circle, and that's downhill, and that runs away even faster once you get to the basket. He just made a big putt. He might be wise to lay up here, Liz. Absolutely. All right, this is another birdie from the last hole. Brett Burgess out of Kansas City. He's got a sidearm to attempt this hole with. Well, we've seen uh, two sidearms and a hook thumb from this guy. I tell you what, throwing a sidearm here is awfully risky because it's going it, mean, to, its bailout zone is in the direction of the slope and it's a fast moving disc. Well, it's you're going to see it right now. Oh, and Liz, great oh, call. Dude, that flared. He hit that tree about seven feet up in the air. He had another 40 feet and a roll to go. Oh, you're right, Billy. He's, he's lucky he hit that tree. Well, now Brandon's making his way out. And a lot of these guys, I mean, these are not touring pro guys. These guys haven't been here all week practicing the course, so they are seeing a lot of these holes for the first time. If they're lucky, maybe played it once or twice, Liz. Well, and you know, he's from Texas, and if it's indicative of a Texas player, those guys play a lot in the open. Well, they have those nice little uh, uh, burly trees near the basket that'll stick you. Uh, but other than that, you are correct. They do not do, they deal with wind more than they deal with the woods. You know, that is one nice thing about today and yesterday, Billy. There has hardly been any wind here. Oh, early for Brandon. He oh, has crashed boy. over. And, oh, Liz, you see where he went. That is a death lie. Yeah, and, you know, we saw that a lot with some of the other players earlier this week. They're, the rough is so punishing, Billy. Well, Bradley Tucker now, and a great save of a four. Changed his attitude. Just a smooth little shot here. He could get him a birdie and get under par. Oh, oh that's I a power shot. That's coming in hot. It's got oh, to That's got to hit a tree. That's got to hit a house. Oh, it did. I, t I tell you what, all these players are getting some awfully friendly kicks, except that was Brandon 20 Miller. feet up, and that was running down. That saved him about 70 feet, and he's got about a 35 foot uphill putt. We'll let him make our way on down to the green here. This is an advanced group from the PDGA Championships Friday afternoon. Oh, Liz, this is not where you want to be. No, absolutely not. There's about what? Hundred trees in between him and the basket. Well, he's got, you know, he's got a side on him looking like right now. And, and oh wow! Oh. Boy, that was still that was too hot, Liz, and that, that was going to have to hit something to keep it down. He's going to have himself a chip. He might be able just to get up and down for his bogey. What are those three words again in golf that are? Hmm. You're still out. Well, all right, Brandon is still out, and he's still left with kind of a difficult shot here. Well, he'd be wise to lay this thing up, take his four, and get on to the next hole and try to start over. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he's going to run any. Oh, yeah, smart choice by Brandon. He laid it right underneath the pin. Well, that is a runaway green. We'll let you see it as we get on up for some birdie putts. 
All right, Will Taylor now. He was probably, he had the best controlled shot. It was coming in nice and soft. It hit a tree right at the end. Um, he's faced with a downhill dangerous putt right no, now. No, we call that a death putt, Liz. I mean, if he does not draw some metal, he is going to have a longer putt coming back uphill. I believe he's going to run this. He looks like he wants it. Well, he, he is just practicing made a big it. Putt and this is about the same distance. He's outside the circle. It's up, and it's in the basket. Nice putt by Will Taylor. Well, he's from Charlotte, North Carolina. One thing I can tell you about them boys is they know how to putt. Bradley. Right next out. Bradley Tucker, who hit a condo there to give him this uphill 35-footer here, and this is a big putt for Bradley. He's oh, yeah, he was coming in so hot. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's inside of 35 feet. That was a very kind tree. That was about 15 to 20 feet up when he hit that tree. Well, and you know the difference between the two putts that we just saw? Right now, Bradley has nothing to worry about. He can run this putt without any real worry of it running away. The butt pucker factor is Oh, gone. boy. Oh, boy. That It hit all sorts of metal. It hit the very top of the rim. It hit the bottom of the cage. hit all sorts of chains and bounced out. What are you saying? It never had a chance? Oh, no. I said it had every chance in the world. And then it just, the basket spit it out. All right, next up is... Uh, well, that's Brett Burgess over in the corner in this. That's right. Now, his was the hot sidearm coming in. This is for an actual birdie. And, boy, I tell you, these guys are having some tree love. Oh, is he putting, is he putting with a mid-range? I can't tell from here. That could be a candy putter. That looks putter. awfully sharp. All right, well, he's got a side hill putt here. He's level with the basket. It's up in the air. Oh, ooh. Oh, and it's rolling with... Oh, and it's that gone to the bottom. Break. We just heard it as it rustled in the leaves. That's right. We're going to follow him as he makes his way down there. You're going from birdie to bogey if you're not careful on these kinds of greens. That was about an inch short. And just check out where he's got to make his next putt from. Well, you're right, Billy. And you know, this is hopefully this is the, uh, the lesson that he'll learn during this round. That we are playing on hills. It is dangerous out here. Well, he better learn it quick because the next hole's gonna have a hill. The hole after that's gonna have a hill and just about every hole out here has got some elevation up or down to deal with. Isn't that the truth? All right, here he is to save a par. It's up in the air. Oh, oh. he cans it. What a great putt by Brett Burgess. A huge comeback. That was solid. All right, he's the lowest rated player on this card, but well, I'll tell you what, he does not look like it right now. Will Taylor starting out on fire, two down through two. Bradley Tucker sitting at two, or at even after two. A couple of my Charlotte homies will wish him luck. We're going to move on around the course now and show you some more action. This is the advanced men's division from the 2011 PDGA Championships Friday afternoon. Well, we are at hole six now, a little 333-foot downhiller, and we found another group here. That's right. This group is going to have Steven Jacobs in it. He just won Pro Worlds in the Junior 1900 division. Am Worlds. Am Worlds, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. In the, in the Junior division, he took it down. Aaron Doyle is also on the card, along with Clark Edwards. Well, Kyle Gray was supposed to be in this group out of Willits, California, but he has pulled out. And it looks like first on the tee is going to be Aaron Doyle. That's right, Billy. Now, these guys are going to be challenged here with throwing a downhill shot. It's 333 feet, but it is a pretty good backhand hyzer. Oh, that is ripped, Liz. Wow. Talk about going straight through some trees. Well, he cut a couple limbs down. He actually flew past the basket. Do that he's disc got have lasers on it? Don't Unbelievable. Oh. Wow, there's some power from that young man right there. Well, he's from North Augusta, South Carolina, right down the road, so he's probably played here more than these guys. All right, next on the pad, I believe, is Stephen Jacobs. Yeah, that is Stephen. He's from Gurney, Illinois. Not only did he take a title back there, but Kenny Glassman, the AM world champion from the advanced men, also took a title back to Gurney, Illinois. Yeah, a lot of them did. I believe Illinois went home. Oh, I like that, Liz. Oh, Billy liked that thing right into a tree. Well, you know, those are the two guard trees that are going to block everybody's shots. And, you know, that's just a testament to the course. You have to throw in the open spaces. Well, here's Clark Edwards now. He's out of Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, that's right. Looks like he suffered uh, a real early on and very upset about that, too. Well, we're going to let him come down. He can still get up and down. This is the tough hole, number six, 333 feet. Oh, and you can see up and down is the word here in Augusta. 
Well, I tell you what, Billy, this Clark Edwards, he certainly has the heart for the game. He's only an 840 rated player, and he's still stepping up and playing in the PDGA Championships. Way to go. Well, not only that, he drove from Tallahassee, Florida. It's not that bad. It's in the panhandle up top. He's probably got about a five, six hour ride, but that is a long way. Yeah, you bet. But you know, he's out here. He's he's chopping through the woods just like everybody else. He might get messed up on this hole, but he may lace the next hole. He had no line over there, and you can see the result of an errant shot getting off the fairway here. Let's get on down now and see exactly how he does, because he's going to possibly hear those dreaded words, Liz. Oh boy, Clark Edwards! Clark Edwards is still out, and this is this is one of the situations where you really have to be a player and, and you know think about: Do I am I going to throw out to the fairway here? Am I just going to take a four? You know, play play myself for a four? But he didn't even give himself that choice. Now he's thinking about it for a five. Well, he's looking to get up and down here and just see. He could still cart his four, but he has got to put the rope through the eye of a mm -hmm. needle and. Mm -hmm. You can see that is never easy to do. No, no. All right, here is Steven Jacobs, and he's got a good angle to get up and down. You're right, Billy, and he looks pretty versatile here, too. He's going to do a stretch out forehand. His other option would be uh, like a stretch out backhand, but it seems like he feels comfortable with that shot. Well, a new rule coming into play there is he's moving the brush under his feet. That is completely legal. Well, he is really taking his time. I like his game. All right, see if he can get up and down for a par. Oh, good looking <laughs> shot. He gave it a run. He's going to get up and down for his par. Let's move around now and see if Clark can get up on the green and get himself a bogey putt. All right, well, these guys are going to try to determine who's out. Either Aaron Doyle, who got all the way down to the green, or... All right, Aaron Doyle looks like he's out. This is his birdie putt, Billy. Well, he penetrated off the back of the green and dropped right down into a nice little gully, increasing the difficulty level of his birdie about three or four fold. Oh yeah, when you, when you, one foot is a foot above the other foot trying to make a putt, that's still, maybe not. Not a problem, as he just rammed that thing in there, barely got over the tray, and that is a birdie for Aaron Doyle. Okay, let's see if he can make this putt. He's gonna go ahead and save a handful of strokes, but oh, your confidence can be rocked after something like that. Well, my kind of hole, he just hollered out there as he just is frustrated. One birdie on this hole, Clark's gonna take a six. And Steve Jacobs with a great up and down. He had a good looking drive. He's gonna look oh, like yeah, he's gonna card an easy three. Yeah, this isn't necessarily the easiest putt with cameras on. A little downhill behind it, but he handled it well. He's a world champ. He's had the film rolling on him before. This is another card here from the advanced division. We're gonna follow him on over to the next hole and see just how well they can continue playing. This is the PDGA Championships 2011. Let's go. Gotta go, gotta throw is your one-stop resource for golf discs and accessories. Carrying a full line of golf discs from every manufacturer, bags, baskets, and apparel. Talk to their knowledgeable staff when shopping and get advice on what type of disc you should get for your style of play. If it's experience you're looking for, they have it. Have you started your class collection yet? I have. I got all seven. 
And that's what we saw at the ring. Clash DVD. Start your collection today. I've got mine. It's that easy. He's looking at a turbo. It tends to go in a lot. Clash DVD. Have you started your collection? I have mine. That's got a chance. Clash DVD. Have you started your collection? I got mine. Okay, the International Disc Golf Center is full of great information, and I was able to track down executive director of the PDGA, Brian Graham, and he is going to take us on a guided tour. Well, all right, we've arrived at the International Disc Golf Center. I'm standing here with Brian Graham, our executive director, director of the PDGA, and he's going to show us inside this International Disc Golf Center. Liz, good to have you guys here. Y'all come on in. Let me give you a tour. All right, let's check it out. Oh, wow. This, this is the clubhouse building for the, for the IDGC. Um, this statue was built by Steve Brenster, who's a top touring pro, who I know that you know. Steve is a uh, fantastic artist. And, uh, you know, it looks, it looks to, all handmade. It you know, looks it beautiful. Is. Steve used to make these statues for tournaments up there in his area of the country, and they used to give them away as part of the trophies. So John Lixit, who is a PDJ board member, commissioned Steve to make this for the building, and uh, he brought it down to the grand opening in 2007. It's my favorite piece of art in the building. It's and a beautiful welcome into the building. You know really where you is. are when you walk in. That's right. And also, I just want to point out that this is a climate-controlled building, and oh, it feels great in here. <laughs> Isn't it great to come in after a round of golf? Uh, well, all right. What are you going to show us next, Brian? Liz, the Ed Hedrick Memorial Museum is also here at the IDGC. Let's it's, check it out. It's a combination of Ed Hedrick's collection as well as that of the Disc Golf Hall of Fame. Liz, this is Ed Hedrick. Ed was a CEO at Whammo Corporation. He was also the founder of the PDJ in 1976 and later turned it over to the players as a member-run organization. But uh, It looks like he's the guy we have to thank for all of this. He is the guy. Ed invented the pole hole, which is the disc catching device that we all throw at. Matter of fact, we got Ed's prototype pole hole Wow. Here. This is the one that Ed and his son welded together in their garage, pole hole number one. It's right back here in the corner. All right, let's check it out. The cool thing about this, Liz, as I said, Ed built it in the garage with his son, but think about this. Back in those days, they were throwing Frisbees, big lids into this Whoa. thing. So imagine a lightweight Frisbee, not a golf disc, hitting these chains and oh, bounce yeah. outs and, you know, the tray is a little bit smaller. Yeah, it sure is. It. It's got the original welds. Um, it's an ingenious device. It really, the design of it hasn't changed much over the years. Ed took it and got it patented. and. Uh, the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And you know, it is really similar. I'm glad they've kept some of the design. Yeah, and we've, uh, we encourage people when they come here. They say, can I touch it? They go, matter of fact, not only can you touch it, we encourage people to throw a disc into it. Pole, <laughs> careful, pole careful, one. there's a window back there. <laughs> Liz, this case has some very special items in it. This, this gold necklace back here is a gold chain with a gold frisbee on it. That was given to Ed by Whammo Corporation. It looks just like a Whammo. It is. I was going through the archives <laughs> some time back and I found an old newspaper clipping and in it, Ed was quoted. He said, my patent made millions for Whammo and all I got from it was this gold necklace. <laughs> That's it. Well, hopefully it's solid gold, huh? Yeah, I hope so. What's some of the rest of this anyway, stuff? Anyway, the, the disc here is one of the Hedrick Memorial Frisbee discs. It has Ed's ashes in it. You can see the little dark specks. That's Ed. Wow. When Ed passed away, it was his wish for his ashes to be molded in the disc so that he could fly forever. Well, he's done it. This particular done it. disc is special because his wife, Farina, was here at the grand opening. She took that disc and she threw it onto the roof of the building as part of the grand opening ceremonies. And that's because there's an old Frisbee saying, old Frisbee players like old Frisbees. They don't die, they just land up on the roof. <laughs> that's so true. So anyway, we brought that in because we knew a storm <laughs> would blow it away or some Frisbee player would climb up there and get it down. But anyway, that's a very special thing. And uh, some of Ed's other items that he used to wear, Frisbee belt and buckle. That's right, and we see he is still a current PDGA member too. He is, we put all <laughs> his current cards in there. Well, there's part one of a look at the Audi GC. Now let's get back out where Liz and I are going to call some more live action from the advanced field for you. All right, we have made our way to hole number seven. This is a 405 footer. Been going downhill, now we're going to go uphill a little bit. Yeah, no kidding, we're going uphill. We're going uphill to the right and we're going through trees. 
Tell them about the gap they have to hit on this whole building. Well, it's a 405 footer, and the biggest problem you got is right off the bat, the angle they're forcing you to throw the Anheuser on, it's almost like you need an unstable piece of plastic to flip it up and then have it. You're going to throw a, a stand up flip. Anheuser is what you really need on this hall. It's a specialty shot. Flip Heiser Anheuser, that's right. <laughs> and here's Aaron Doyle. He's from North Augusta, not far from here, so maybe he's been out here practicing that shot. Tell you what, he, judging by his last shot, he is a power player. I'm excited to see this shot. Oh, he has ripped that, Liz, and that is a beautiful looking shot. Right in the opening of the keyhole, leading right up to the green. What a great shot by Aaron Doyle. And that's where you want to be. He's got a great opportunity to get up and down. He's playing above the average rating. I mean, his rating is a 942, and the average rating of all the amateurs here is 938. All right, Stephen Jacobs here, our junior amateur world champion. All right, he's taking some time to line it up. He may be throwing a mid-range off the pad here just for placement and just to get the turn on the disc. Well, that's something that a lot of players have trouble with, is playing two oh, shot holes. It's in the air. Oh, yeah, that looks... I tell you what, he got there with a mid-range. Aaron Doyle got there with a the driver. Each shot. Looking great. Well, they're right where they want to be. All right, Clark Edwards is stepping up here. Looks like he's going to throw a thumber. Well, thumber's not a bad option for this. It'll handle the angle, and it should let him finish back right. Coming right at us, Liz. All right, well, he's not in a bad position either. He is on the edge of the fairway, and he is happy to just walk straight off the tee pad. Well, here's uh, Clark Edwards in. He's in the fairway, but oh, his angle is horrible. Well, you know, it, it seems like he's uncomfortable throwing like a soft floating uh, backhand anhyzer. He looks like he's gonna try a thumber again, try to sneak it through there. Oh boy, this is a tight angle. I used to be the number one thumber in the world and that wouldn't have been my choice from there. Was punished, but you know, it's not as bad as it could be. You know, we'll get up now as two perfect drives, looking right at the green. All right, Steven Jacobs. Yeah, what a great shot that was. The gap to hit here is not very big. It's only about 20 feet wide. Oh, that's a Ooh, little he's early. He's come over on that, but he's basket high. He got knocked out by the tree, but. Oh, I had knocked him over next to the bucket there. That's a little world champ love. I don't know, he's a little short. That's like 33 feet out. Oh, I'm gonna call that an 18 footer money. <laughs> All right, next up is Aaron Doyle. He threw a great shot. It was a very powerful shot, very low, and it dug right into the ground there. Uh, he's probably been out here practicing and warming up for this event, and he is actually, he's actually brought his A game today, it looks like this. Hey, you bet. Look at that shot. Well, he has basted up next to the bucket. This is an advanced group here from the 2011 PDGA Championships. Oh, we've got advanced, advanced, advanced men, advanced women, pro men and pro women. There are no other divisions here this weekend. That's right, and they were playing for the best of the best here. Well, and you've got players right now like Clark Edwards that have stepped up an 840 rated player. Good little side on him there, but he has stepped up. He's drove on over and he wants to be a part of this. He wants to get better. Let's go see if they can can some putts. Clark Edwards now. Oh yeah, you know, on top of that, it looks like he's down in a little ditch even. You know, let's see if he can just can a putt here. Oh, this would be for par, this would be big. Oh. Looks like it went to the right side of the basket. Just a bit outside. Yeah, sometimes that little bit of elevation change can throw off your whole game. Oh, it that. is humid out here, I tell you what. Yeah, There's these not guys, much air movement through these woods. They're gonna have a hard time holding on to these discs all day. Now here is Steven Jacobs, and that tree kicked him over. I think it helped him a little bit. He's inside the circle, oh, yeah. not a problem. About 12 footer. Very nice birdie by Steven Jacobs. And Aaron Doyle moving in now. And these guys are carting some birdies. They have brought their A game. But we are going to leave these guys now, and we're going to get around the course a little bit. Liz, let's, let's go see if we can find We've got two groups of advanced women out here. Let's see if we can find those advanced women and see how they're handling this course. Well, here we are. And this is the Warner course. 
the women, hole number 10 of the advanced division, and this is one tough hole, Liz. Oh yeah, you are not even joking, Billy. This is 477 feet long, and it's downhill, and it's a really tight technical fairway, and the green is no joke either. Well, it's not playing 477, but it is absolutely playing tough. We've got a great group here. We've got six, I believe, advanced women in this group. Sarah Nicholson, Wendy Boughton, and Emily... Lander. Lander. These girls. You're right, Billy. Now there's not six in this group. There's six women total. In this field, in mm -hmm. the advanced field, we've got two of those groups. And it looks like they're going to get ready to play here. This is hole ten at Warner Friday afternoon. All right. First on the tee is Sarah Nicholson. That's right. She is our PDGA memberships manager as well, and she calls this. Place Ooh, that's home. a good-looking shot right there, Liz. Oh boy, she hit that big tree right in the center and landed right by that short tee I uh, had to nice that one too. That had a good angle, good speed, and that was really going to get on down. That's right. Now we're going to take a look at MD. Bo I'm sorry, Wendy Bowden out of Brookfield, Massachusetts. Shoot, I tell you what, I watched her play earlier, and she's making some great shots today. Well, this is a gravity shot. I mean, if you can just manipulate the first couple of gaps and have a decent angle on it, you can easily, even as an advanced woman, throw a 350 foot plus shot here. You're absolutely right, and she's 844 rated. She's right around the average rating of all these other girls. You know, she's canning big putts out there today. It looks like it's low enough, it might catch some trouble on the left side. Oh, she did penetrate down the fairway a little bit, but mm, again, she might have to punch out for her next shot. Well, you've got to have that Anheuser angle, but you, I mean, it is such a fine line. And now on the tee is Emily Lander. That's right. You know, she's got some good support today. She's being followed by her parents. This is her first trip to the IDGC. Oh, she suffered a little bit of trouble off a pad there. Came out a little early. This is an intimidating hold. This is one of the cards of the advanced women here at the first annual PDGA Championships. Okay, Emily is suffering a little bit off the beginning of the pad, but you know, her home course is Sedgley Woods up in Oh, I've Pennsylvania. been there. It's brutal itself. I mean, there's demanding shot after demanding shot at Sedgley Woods, so she should feel a little comfortable here. You know, she says she said she felt that way earlier, and you know, it's just we talked about this course, and it's a lot of those holes stuck together. Oh, and that has given her a terrible lie. She's gonna lay right next to a little snake pit. They've just thrown up some nice brush pile over there, and that is an unfortunate kick. Now, Sarah Nicholson, oh, she's lined up a sidearm. You really gotta have all the tools to play these courses. Oh yeah, she knows that too, and she has a sidearm and a backhand. It just depends on which shot she feels more comfortable with here. Well, she's probably got the most pressure put on herself because she works here, she gets to play here, she lives here. You'd think she should be the favorite, in her mind at least. Oh, good looking placement shot by Sarah Nicholson. Well, that works nicely. That's going to give her an opportunity. She's still got some small trees to penetrate through, but that is a decent <laughs> shot to try and get up and down for her par. Oh, you can see she's got one foot just in the edge of that snake pile, Liz. I tell you, it's punishing enough out here. Why? Hmm. You know, it takes a really challenging player to even attempt these courses and you know I give all these all the credit in the world to these girls playing these courses with the big bad boys. Well Emily's lining up now uh, she's gonna show us well she went from the sidearm she's got one because she looked at it and she's trying to figure it out over there and this oh that's a really tough shot she's gonna do a, a stretch back shot and yeah, this judging by it it doesn't look like she's gonna yeah she threw a nice placement shot well played by Emily. Well, that'll get her in an opportunity to maybe get a hazard down on the green. Let's get down now and see exactly where Wendy's drive ended up. All right, we're gonna watch Wendy attempt her second shot here. She does have a little bit of a footing issue as she's kind of in a mound with sticks and, and shrubbery. Roots, all kinds of stuff. She's got a dogwood right there over top of her. You can see the pine roots running all out and she really got an unfortunate kick she was about a foot from being just perfect that cost her every bit of another 150 feet Liz. yeah you bet and you know the line of the basket looks relatively open if she can access that window um it, it's gonna be hard there's no run up on this shot she's not gonna be able to do that but if she can get it out around that corner she can fall right into the green boy that is one tough lie as you can see her feet she is looks like she's gonna line up the inside line and maybe cut the corner she can reach it. It's just a matter of pure in this first gap. And I think if she can find the fairway, it will fly on down. She'll give herself a putt for a birdie on this hole. 
Wendy Bowden from Philly, PA. Actually, I think she's from Massachusetts. Oh, she is from Brookfield, Massachusetts. And that's a good looking shot, Liz. Flare skip curling right around to the. That's a oh, great shot by that. Wendy. That worked itself back over the basket. She's going to have a chance for a birdie three. Well, like all the other holes here, you know, if you get one or two feet off this defined fairway, you are just dealing with all sorts of trick shots, trouble shots, anything you can do to get down to the green. Well, Emily's now, she's breaking out that side arm. Oh, oh what a good looking side arm. Avoid that. Oh, I tell you what, that looked good too. That was Early clean. That came back out and would have nestled right underneath the basket. Sarah Nicholson getting here by a very impressive shot. It's too bad that she's punished by a couple of those little twiggy trees right there. Oh, she has really got a thread of the needle. She's coming off a birdie on hole nine. Good All right, one. it looks like it's up. It's got to miss that tree. That tree is a magnet, Billy. Boy, what a guardian tree right there. Just pulled it right over to it. She lays three. She's still got a chance to get her four, but she's going to have to earn it. That's a pun. Well, Sarah Nicholson, and oh, she'd almost be smart just to lay this thing up, Liz. Yeah, and she's a smart player, Billy. I think she will. But she's going to give it a bid. Oh, boy. That was a great bid layup. Yep, you bet. It was a run and a, <laughs> and a layup at the same time. Well, All right, now, next out, hitting, suffering the same tree. This is Emily, and let's see if she has the same attempt. I like her socks, Liz. I know, me too. I like her whole attitude. She's really into this game, and she, I mean, she, she's going to be around for a while. Well, traveling down here with her family from Philly. And that just needs to sit. Oh, she's got the Sarah roll Emily. action. And now moving in, I mean... You know, Wendy wants to go back to Massachusetts and tell them girls, I birdied that 477 footer. She's got a chance for a three, and that is awesome on this whole list. You bet, Billy. I, I believe Wendy is oh. still not out. I think she's even Wendy inside is, the circle. She might be parked up there. She's, I just seen some tension just rush right off of her as she told Emily that she was still out. And Emily's probably at the circle's edge, so Wendy's gonna be inside of that. Oh yeah, you bet. So Emily here is just outside of the circle, uphill putt. Oh. Just a little too much oomph. Yep, you bet. This is, this is a hole for Emily where she's just gonna have to suffer through it, learn her lesson, and move on. Oh, look at where Wendy's at. She's pinned high, about 12 feet right. What a sigh of relief, you're right. Well, this is going to be a birdie three right here, Liz, on a demanding hole. Oh, Wendy. Oh, no, that's got to hurt. Oh, and it's rolling. It's rolling. Oh, my oh, no, goodness. No, 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 it's oh, gone no. from a 12-footer to you are still out and come down here by the water's edge, and now she's got a tough just up and down. You bet. I mean... We all know what that feels like, Billy, and it just doesn't feel good. Absolutely not. I was ready to card that three. Oh, Here's a, Wendy for a huge four. This is a big putt. Attitude changer right here. Oh, boy, that is a shot in the foot. Well, let's just hope that she can bounce back because she threw two beautiful shots to get herself in position. Emily's going to finish up now. This, a demanding hole. Hole 10 at Warner. Downhill 477 feet and technical. You bet, Billy. I tell you what, these girls are out here for the weekend and for the most part, looks like they're having fun. Well, this is the first round, Friday afternoon. They've got two rounds tomorrow and we're playing Warner long today. They get to play Warner short tomorrow. So that will be a lot more pleasant for these girls. For everybody, actually. Yeah, you bet. Well, these girls have tapped out now. This is the advanced women's division. We're going to see if we can't get around and find the other group of advanced women here at Warner Park. First round of the 2011 PDGA Championships. Liz, we are lucky enough to run down the other group of advanced women. We're on Warner course, and we're out here at hole number 13. Yeah, you know, there's three special ladies here. It's Heather Dameron, Leah Taylor, and Candy Rock. They are all forced with a really tough shot, straight uphill. 
Well, this is uh, 282. This place, every bit of 350. And as you can see, it is a narrow gap right off the bat. You bet, you know, it's like they're going to have to throw up another one of those Heiser flip shots if they wanted to climb that hill. Well, Heather is the highest rated player in this division at 879. <laughs> it all looks like she's out of Asheville, North Carolina, too. Looks well, like North Carolina's. They, they always had to breed disc golfers. Well, that they do. World champions, am world champions at least. And what you've got here is just a demanding tee shot straight uphill. Candy Rock now making her way to the tee. That's all right, Candy's out of Tampa, Florida. Not much elevation changes in any Florida course I've ever seen. That is a fact. The canyon was the only elevation course in Florida, and it is gone. Oh, boy. But she well, stayed in the middle, though. That's a benefit. That's actually a huge benefit on this hole. I mean, a, a good placement shot on this hole because it is tough. You, if you can get yourself just maybe 50, 70 feet in front of that short tee pad, you're going to be able to work with a, an approach shot. Well, here's Leah Taylor, and she's all the way from Pohuska, Oklahoma. Yeah, I tell you what, she's been playing a lot these days. You have got to continue playing and practicing if you want to get better. Oh, look at that little flare skip just past the amp pad. That'll work. That'll get her up and looking at the next shot. You bet, Billy. Well, we're going to let these girls come up the hill. We'll follow them up. This is number 13, straight uphill at Warner. Man, Heather has found one tough spot. She's probably got a hole like this in Asheville. Oh, great shot out of there. Right in the heart, she can get up and down from there for a four. Well, now Candy Rock, she's in a good spot. I mean, she's right in the middle, but still. Well, the only problem with her shot here, Billy, is that right behind her actually is a little bunker, so it might might mess up her run up and her footing. Well, yeah, look at there. She just took a step up, a step down, a step up. It's like a staircase that she's got to throw from. All right, hopefully she's. Good choice. A way to throw back in and get it to climb that hill. Uh, you've got to climb the hill, and you've also got to manipulate the alley. Good looking shot from Candy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Making the way up the hill. Right where she wants to be. Well, she's came up, Liz. I mean, she's looking to try to get up and down for a par on a tough hole, and she's really come up and surveyed it. She's playing golf. Oh, you bet, absolutely. And, you know, especially benefiting off of that drive, it had a huge flare skip. I um, mean, you know, if she can capitalize on that uh, little bit of luck she got off the tee pad, she might be able to walk out of here with a with a good number. Well, we're up near the basket, and I can tell you there's an unconventional route. She's looking right at us. She could literally throw right to us and hazard this thing into the bucket, but I think she's looking. No, she's. I think she's looking at this alley, and that's a smart choice. Got to commit. Absolutely. I mean, even if she throws it up here, it's, it's going to bail out, but it's still going to be, you know, near the fairway. It could kick and go right, but again, there's not much punishment off to the right. Good looking shot there. Oh, just, just missed the one tree. She's still getting it up the hill though. Well, Heather Dameron now with a, just a exploding drive right out of her hand, but a great sidearm to get to right here. Oh yeah, you bet, Billy. I mean, she can no longer play for a three, That's but she can go. definitely play for a four. You know, she's about in, on the circle's edge, I'd say, next to a tree. Next to a tree. Candy Rock now. And Heather's going to have one tough putt, but there's a chance she can straddle putt being from Asheville. Asheville, the course up there, Richlands, is covered in trees. Uh, here's Candy. It looks like she can get up here with a nice hyzer approach, get it to fall maybe just in front of the bucket, get around the line. Looks like she's lining up her sidearm, just going to try to pop it right there. Oh, good shot. Oh, she hits the same tree, scoots over. Definitely a better lie, though, than uh, Heather. Yep, absolutely. Well, a fortunate drive with the flare skip, and I think she should be able to get up and down here, but this is no gimme shot. Oh, no, any of these stretch out shots beyond the trees are tough, but not a problem for Leah Taylor. No, oh, that putt will be in the bucket. She'll cart a four on this 285-footer uphill, playing every bit of 320 to 330, Liz. All right, well, Heather made a good approach here, although she did find a little bit of trouble by that tree. She's going to force her to maybe straddle putt here. Oh, a little bit low. Well, Candy's going to move in. Candy had the same tree bounce to the right, but she's got a nice clear line looking right out of the bucket. She should give this a great chance. You bet. You know, just from knowing her, I know she's a good putter.
tried to just stab it in there. You know, maybe a good thing it hit the front of the cage, because if it was any above that, I could have picked up and went down that hill. You know, Leah moving in now for her easy four, and these other two girls are going to have an easy four. And this has been live action from the first day here, the first round of the 2011 PDGA Championships. Heather Damron moving in now. And this is also 4-4. Four, four. Well done there by Heather. Candy's going to clean it up. And that's some live action from your women's division, Advanced, here in Augusta. Well, we've had a great day, first day of the 2011 PDJ Championships. We were with the Advanced field today, and we sent Liz Carr over to get some post-round interviews. Here's some I'm on Cloud 9 post-round interviews with Liz Carr. Well, all right, we've got Ricky Waisaki here. He just fired a 58 on the Jim Warner course. First off, nice shooting. Thank you. How'd it feel? Did it feel like you're keeping him in the fairway? How'd you shoot that 58? Yeah, I mean, you, that course, you kind of have to. You got to take your medicine when you, you, when you have to. And uh, I just knew that, that was the toughest course out of them all, so I got to just cruise through that one, and I, I did, so that's a good start. Absolutely. Now, how, do you think this is going to help you prepare for the Worlds coming up here in Charlotte? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I just moved, recently moved to Fort Mill, South Carolina, so I mean, that, I live real close to all those other courses, and uh, so I mean, that'll definitely get me prepared. Well, there we have it. This is Ricky Waisaki from Ohio, but moving to South Carolina. I know they're happy to have him, and he seems like he can play through these tight lies. All right, here is Will Schustrick. He is the defending national champion, and he might want his title back, shooting a 58 on Jackson. Holy cow, tell us how this happened. Uh, you know, it was just an easy round out there. Just threw some good shots. I got an eagle on 15 and missed a couple putts here and there and missed some up shots that I could have gotten. Maybe left four or five out there, but So there was the round. potential for even a better score, but yeah, I think a 58 is probably going to be right up near the top. How about yep. you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, are you looking forward to, to tomorrow? You have two rounds tomorrow. Yeah. How do you feel about the courses you're playing tomorrow? Are you going to feel as confident? Yeah, I've played here a lot. Uh, I think uh, I know the shots pretty well. Hopefully, uh, they end up pretty well for me. Well, all right, thank you, yeah. Will Strick. We Thanks. appreciate the time. Thanks. Well, all right, here we are with Nate Doss, world champion Nate Doss. <laughs> and I tell you what, you came out here with some heat in the first round, shooting a 58 on the Jackson course. How did you make this happen? Um, well, it, the Jackson course, you know, can either be your friend or your worst enemy. I think today it was um, my friend. I just kept it in the fairway and got off the fairway a couple of times, but for the most part, Kept it in the fairway and was able to make a few putts and, and ended up shooting, you know, course par 11 under. So I'm just happy with it. Um, you know, it's a long tournament. We have two very different courses yet to play with Ed and Warner. So I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we still have guys coming in now. So I'm just hoping I'm near the lead and looking forward to the weekend. Well, absolutely. I know there's only one other 58 that I heard out there. So right now you're on the top. Hopefully you can maintain it for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I'll try. All right, that's Nate Doss, your current world champion. All right. <laughs> All right, we are talking to Paige Pierce now. She is the current women's world champion. Also playing pretty darn good today, shooting a 67 on the Jackson course. Yep. How'd it happen? All, I think I threw pretty much every good shot I could and I really only missed one putt that I felt like I should have made. Well, save some of the other good shots for the rest of the weekend. I'll try, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so your strategy out there, were you throwing drivers, mid-ranges? I mean, what, what kept you in the middle of the fairway? What kept you ahead of the pack? On the par fives, I usually threw drivers, um, but there was some that I clubbed down to a putter or a buzz just to get the angle right and land in the middle. Absolutely. Well, we're excited to see you out here and playing so well. I know we want to see you finish on top. This is Paige Pierce, current women's world champion on the Cloud9 post-round interviews. Well, that is the first day in the books here, the 2011 PDGA Championship, and what a humid, hot day it's been. Whew. I tell you what, it started out with rain and moved on to like 100% humidity, if not more. Um, it's It's been a real trial out there for a lot of players, but we are seeing some good numbers come in. Well, the three courses these guys are going to have to play. Uh, the pros got in the Jackson course this afternoon. The AMs got in the Warner long, and we'll see what happens tomorrow as things are starting to set up and the cream will start rising to the top tomorrow. You bet, Billy. Well, this is the PDGA Championship live from Augusta, the IDGC Center. Billy Crump and Liz Carr for Clash DVD.